Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Messy Works. I'm Messi Maru, also known as Lou Sim, and I'm a Lego mech builder. Most of the time I get questions on uh, what parts do mech builders normally get and in this video I'd like to go over some of the parts that I've recently purchased. These are parts that are staple for me with my mech building and this is actually a very small purchase compared to what I normally get. The first bag that we have here is a hundred pieces of what I'd call leg extenders. And what makes these this specific part essential for mech building is you have the, um, if you can see it here in the video, there's that small circle area on the inside of the socket. That's actually a rubber area here. Um, then on the underside, it's, it mimics a ball joint. So this actually called a leg extender because they normally put this for the thighs connecting to the hips and the piece is supposed to give extra stability with the increased traction from the rubber piece right there so this connects to any of your standard size well this size ball joints ball sockets so you have this version or if you have any of the older versions or even these versions the ones that go into the axle or any of these um, hero factory sized sockets right so the more common piece I use with the leg extender 2x2 two two brick with the with the ball socket so I have one piece here and this would fit in with the leg extender just snapping it into place here or if you have the technique Hero Factory version just snaps in there and the wonderful thing about this piece is it doesn't really offer a lot of I mean, for the, for what it gives it doesn't really sacrifice a lot of area for the thigh build so like here's a thigh, thigh assembly I have if I remove the leg extender that's maybe a half stud increase in height in terms of like total area it doesn't really take up a lot of space but it gives a lot of stability for that really small area it occupies so Here's an existing leg assembly I have, um, right? So if I, without without that piece, it's not that big of a difference. Detail-wise, it's also not an eyesore for mech builds. It actually gives like an extra detail that you kind of want to have. It looks like it belongs on a mech. So how, how big of a difference does this piece give versus just the normal joint? Huge, it's huge. Uh, let's socket this in. So normally without that piece, if I were to push here, let's make this more stable. Uh -huh. So let's say I'm just gonna socket in here. Without 
the leg extender, if I push down here on this brick, kind of just gives way. There's really not much resistance to it. You don't really feel it on a light assembly, like if it's just this piece, you don't think, oh, it's, it's not that unstable, right? But when you kind of have a whole leg dangling from that, from this joint, um, let's remove this. You kind of have the whole leg, a whole very compact, relatively heavy build just dangling on the normal joint kind of gives way quite easily so that's pretty loose right there if you have the whole mech stacked here on your hip joint you can expect your your mechs to kind of split outward okay so pulling both tugging both notice this one is giving way the other one with the leg extender is pretty solid okay so do note that the leg extenders have the rubber stability piece there with the hollow ball joints if your joint rotates more than let's say a few degrees so that's fine that's fine that's still in contact if you go past that you're no longer in contact that's loose already okay so that contact with that rubber section there what is what makes it really really stable so without that piece see notice it's just wobbling around but if we add that leg extender there let me use this one. Okay, so leg extender. So those, it's a pretty stable hip assembly right there. Okay, and all my mechs, um, since I started building at this scale, uh, needed this piece just to give it that extra stability because I load my mechs with so many pieces that gets really top heavy and like a normal joint wouldn't be able to hold it unless like I'm locking it in in place with like bricks around this area and that can't quite move or like a brick here that it would prevent it from going into a split outward but without I don't, I don't even I don't need to do that with this leg extender so if ever you go into this this scale mech building I would definitely advise to get this piece it is a lifesaver piece for mech building with these size joints if you use mixel joints, then that's a different matter altogether. But if you use this size joints, these hollow ones, or even the round ones from the mixel series that's used for eyes, then the leg extender is a big saving factor, saving piece. So there. Okay, so those are the leg extenders. So the other pieces that I got with this order are these wedges in sand blue, these one by one round bricks in dark purple, the same bricks, round bricks in light blue gray because I was running short on it. These one by two uh, slopes with a stud and these 1L um, 1L uh, technique connector pieces okay 
So let me go over each piece. Um, start with the wedges here. Now these wedges are one of my favorite pieces from the 90s. Uh, the earlier versions of this didn't really have these notches here. I remember them having just being flat. And that would prevent you from putting a plate there before but with the notches you can now put a stud there so that's great for let's say this is the it's not the same piece um, it's great for let's say if you're putting this on top of a plate then can still put it there. The old version you couldn't do this. You'd have to put a plate here and it'd be kind of floating on top because there'd be no stud notches here. Okay. So these are great pieces for like covering huge areas in your mech without making it too flat. Um, I like these because for one piece, you kind of have a lot of different angled surfaces there. And say combining these pieces would make an excellent, um, let's say shield or thigh plating. That's what I normally use it for. Or even shoulders, right? Um, I just love the shape of these pieces. They're just ideal for the kind of mechs that I build. And getting them in sand blue uh, would allow me to make maybe upgrades to the to the recent mech I've built, the Syria. And I also have these uh, click joint pieces, two by two click joint pieces. This the this is a socket version, not the one with the joint. Uh, I was thinking of like making maybe boosters for the sailor right there. So it'd be something like extra boosters on the back or maybe like a whole extra assembly that would go on top, like a backpack that would hook on to the chest or to the back area and be a full extra set of boosters but yeah these are great pieces to have for you you don't really need a lot of them maybe like four at most I, I just like to stock up on a lot because there's sand blue I don't know when I'll ever get to be able to buy sand blue wedge pieces like this so rather have a lot of them right so I think these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 pieces right there. Okay. Um, next pieces are... Not this one. This one first. So these are your... It's a 1 by 2 plate with an angled area. Okay. So, looking at it, you'd, you'd probably say, what's the difference between this and a 1 by 2 plus a cheese wedge? So, here's a cheese wedge. Uh, if I combine these, you'll notice that they're not quite the same angle. Okay, that's visible right there. They're not quite the same angle. This one is a little more steep. I think it would be close to a 45 degree angle and would be similar to your 1 by 2 slopes for the angle. Even the front part uh, like this flat area here is the same. So if you combine these two side by side that'd be pretty flat right there now 
if you combine the same piece with a cheese slope and 1 by 2 plate assembly notice that it's not quite the same so that's the key difference of it and well the cheese slope and the uh, 1 by 2 is a two piece connection this is a one piece that is a little more complex so there now what I like to do with this piece most of the time is just combine it with a 1 by 2 or a 1 by 1 plate and combine it with a tile and a and I get a really flush slope plus flat area as compared to say having a slope plus a one by one so if I combine if I put these side by side notice that's the key difference right there so that's what I use those pieces for mostly they they tend to go on the feet or the legs of my mechs um, coupled together into twos they could go on shoulders uh, you could also go like this for let's say striping on because if you combine it with this that slope is the same as a 1 by 2 slope so if I combine it there so it's a pretty nice striping section without a stud on top I could also replace the tile with a grill if I wanted to so there's a lot of options to go with this um, so just there's just a lot more finishing options that I could go with see these ingot bars there so yeah I say this an old leg design so let's say for this I put it here and I'd lock this in with a slope and that's pretty locked in right there I'm gonna see that move as compared to just um, being a slope so here's the difference if this was just a slope locking it in there would require a significant amount of parts Plus, stability-wise, this doesn't really connect to this area. So, if I rem this could be just pulled out, and it'd be separate from this top area as compared to this assembly. So, there's just a, it just gives a lot more interlocking options between different plate levels, right? So that's that's why I tend to like pieces with uh, overhangs or like extra areas here that I could interlock other plates or pieces on. So the one by one round is pretty much a standard piece everybody knows about. But these one L connector pieces which I think rolled out sometime 2015 or 2016 if I'm not mistaken um, what I like about this this piece is prior to it coming out the only option you had for these connector pieces were the two L's so that's the old one the two L oops okay and uh, well, the two L's were nice, like normally use it for gun barrels, anything industrial that looks like it needs piping. They're great, and it allow you to make a long 
barrel connection. Let's say if you put the pin, the technique pin here and connect these with multiple two L's, that'd be a very long barrel for a gun, something, right? Um, they'd be nice for things like that, but uh, in terms of mech building and filling up gaps, the two L's were a little too big to use. Let's say if I were to put them on legs. Uh, let me grab a leg. So here's a mech I'm currently working on. If I put them on the legs here, they're a little too big to like fit on anywhere else. Right. At the at the scale I build in, they're a little hard to use. Like I couldn't really, I don't really put two L's anywhere here because they're just too big. Uh, like to get piping this at this size on a, on a mech this big, uh, it'd probably be somewhere along the back, right? So the two L's were too big. So I was really glad when they came out with the one L's. The one else felt like they were just the right size um, compared to the two else anyway. And I normally call these filler pieces. They're like fillers for spaces that you just want um, something more going on there that's a little more industrial, looks a little more mechanical. Um, one by round, one by one round bricks were great but you know they had limitations because of the stud or like they weren't a stud stud connection or a negative stud negative stud connection um so there were just some things that i couldn't do with the one by one round that i could do with the one l connectors so like, one example would be just set these aside. Lamp holder. Lamp holder plus the one L connector. So now I get um, like a detail piece that changes to a different color. say red right and that's a pretty good look to have for like a detail piece and you could still put in a bar in here to connect something to or a longer bar or clips Right, so you just put that there. So that's a great, it, it's pretty much just options, really. Uh, you, you could argue you could do the same with one by one round bricks, right? And let's say I combine these these clips on the under on the other side on the other side rather but no the 3l won't fit anymore or barely it'd have to be a 4l at this point it's a little bigger so sometimes like that extra difference that fraction of a difference in height would mean it wouldn't fit or it fit just right so i like having these options versus just having uh the one by one around and i normally use these for like for almost all my builds 
is that uh, I use them for hip fillers. So this is a normal hip joint I use. 6L axle. You have a area here that connects to the torso. The next one I torso piece. Right. So if I were to connect a leg here, this is a thigh actually, and let's connect the other thigh. So thighs, right? So that's that's part of a mech. You need something to fill the gap of this axle area here. And could normally fill it with let's say these bigger wheel pieces. It fit there. It it limit the rotation of the top area a little, but it fit. Right? But that looks a little too clunky. So the other option I have is let me get it. Are these gears? So it's normally this gear. Socket in there. There's still enough of a gap that the torso can rotate, and close it with that. So that's a that's a nice amount of like industrial looking detail there. Could also put in another kind of gear, shorter, and that's still a great look to it. But the moment I don't want to put gears in there and I put a wheel okay uh, there's also another look that I like so again it's it's more of options this piece will give me the option of putting in a rubber wheel in there in the middle because this, the diameter of one uh, the two L connector and the one by one round brick is the same diameter. If you're looking at it from the top or the underside, and what I like doing to these connectors is socketing these small city rubber wheels into there, and that gives off a great look for thrusters or anything that kind of has to look a little more industrial but round at the same time so could also socket in these um, like more treaded tires not the slick ones and there's also the thinner tires that I can socket into there I mean I could socket these into one by one round as well but here's the thing I can't fit this in there as a filler for my hips so this is a great option for that as I'm able to do things like this for the design So again, it, it really just boils down to options for parts. You don't want to have just like one by one round bricks. You'd make do, but there are certain times where you kind of need a uh, an area, uh, a circular area to go through an axle or to go through, let's say a, a bar, right? or maybe a flex tube or even these um, even these uh, what they call these um, soft axle soft hose tubes yeah so you know if, if I combine these right here right 
So there are just certain times where pieces like these would be helpful. I mean, they're essentially the same as pieces like this, but again, it's optioned. It's just having different options. And when it comes to mech building, you really want as many options as you can get. Unless you're just building the same thing in different colors, then that's a whole matter altogether. Um, but if you're like, like me, you're constantly building new designs at the same size, then having options to do that would be uh, a tremendous help. Also, I forgot to mention that these 1Ls have recently been released in a different color in LBG. And I was able to buy a few of these, uh, I think, a few months back. And again, it's options. It's in, If it's not parts options, like functional options, it's aesthetic options. You'd, you'd want there are times where you just want an LBG version versus a DBG version. If if there was a red or a black version of this, I'd probably get both as well. Um, same with pretty much any piece I have. If I could get them in multiple colors, I would. Because there would just be times where you'd want this over this. You'd want this color over this color. They'd, they'd be functionally the same piece but aesthetically they'd be different same with joint pieces like this is in uh azure blue and i'd have it in your gray i'd have it in like black right there um the older joints are more colorful but tend to be more fragile so i don't use them as much like this trans light blue but i really avoid using these because they kind of they've snapped on me a few times before but yeah it's it's all about options when it comes to mech building you, you really can't get enough options um when you're building the same scale or even if you're not building the same scale you, you wouldn't want to be building the same palette color palette for like an extended period of time so uh that's about it so I hope you learned a thing or two from this short, uh, it's technically a purchase video, but you know, um, hopefully you were able to pick up a few things from how I pick out parts, um, what parts I build in. And uh, if you'd like to know, to know more about how I build mechs or my builds, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel uh, links are in the description you can check out my Facebook page for my other builds my Flickr my Twitter and I'm hoping to post more like videos that would be more ex you know would would go more into explaining how I build things or in the near future I'm looking at doing uh, build breakdowns or time lapse videos so subscribe to my channel and um, help me out uh, create more videos about mech building so thank you for watching and hope to see you guys soon thanks